This video is going to go over how to graph polynomials when they're given to you in standard form. So standard form just looks something like this where it's not already factored for you. If you're not good at factoring, you're really going to struggle with this. So maybe go watch a video or two on how to factor trinomials, how to factor uh, when it's four terms and you have to group it, and how to do cubics as well. All right, let's go ahead and get started. This first one is a trinomial. Um, so when you factor it, it looks like this. Okay, now you kind of have to go a little further with this. You have to basically treat these as difference of squares. Like this one's obvious that it's a difference of squares, but this one's not so obvious. So look, it's going to look like something like this. I'll do this one first, this x squared minus 1. This is going to turn into x plus 1, x minus 1. But this x squared minus 3, it's going to be weird. Basically, it's going to turn into x plus root 3, x minus root 3. So this would be my actual factored form of this equation. Now, if you watched the previous video about graphing polynomials when they're given to you in factored form, this next part will be real easy for you. This is a positive polynomial with a degree of 4, because all these have a, a little 1 here. So the degree is 4, and it's positive because there's no number here, which means there's really like a positive 1 there. So, since it's a positive, even function, my arrows are going to both be going up at the end. Now, I identify my y-intercept, and when I look at my y-intercept, I'm just going to go back to my original equation and make these zeros. And so, like, they go away completely, and it's just plus 3. So, I'm going to mark my y-intercept here at 3. Mark your x-intercepts, so these two are easy, these two are easy to see, this one and this one, it's just going to be at negative 1 and positive 1, and then the other two, they're going to be at positive and negative root 3, and all of these x-intercepts are going to be straight cut-throughs because all these exponents are one. So go ahead and mark it on your graph. We'll call this negative root three. We'll call this negative one. We'll call this positive one and we'll call this positive root three. Again, this is not to scale, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, now I have all the information that I need. Start with your left arrow. Come down, you have to cut straight through at negative root three. Work your way back up, cut straight through at negative 1, go hit your y-intercept, go back down to the positive 1, you have to cut straight through. Same thing with the positive root 3, and that's it. The biggest part is being able to factor it completely. Um, all right, let's look at this next one. This is a four term, so to factor it, you need to split it in the middle and GCF each side. So if you factor this, it's going to look like this. All right, like that. Now, again, this is not really fully factored because you still have this x squared right there. Um, so you could even go a little further with this, kind of like the previous problem and just call it a difference of squares, x plus root five, x minus root five. All right. <clears throat> 
So now I know it's a positive odd function because all these exponents are one, so it's degree three, and there's not a number in front, so it's like a positive one out in front. So since it's a positive odd function, my arrows have to do this. Identify your y-intercept. Again, when I do y-intercept, I look at the original because it's so easy just to plug in zero for all these x's, and they're basically all going to cancel, and it's just going to leave your y-intercept of 45. Find your x-intercepts by setting all these factors equal to zero and then solving. So this one's going to be at 9 fourths. This one's at root 5. This one's at negative root 5. Mark those on your graph here. So we'll call this uh, root 5. We'll call this negative root 5. And we'll call this 9 fourths. All of these x-intercepts are going to be straight through because all their exponents are 1s. All right, I have all the information I need. Start with your leftmost arrow. You have to cut straight through negative 5. You have to go hit that y-intercept. Work your way back down. Cut straight through positive 5. And then work your way back. Cut straight through 9 fourths. It would look something like that. And again, in terms of factored form, this is probably what I'm looking for. If you got it to like this one, You'd probably get most of the credit. Okay, lastly, the x cubed plus 8. This is a sum of cubes. So go ahead and go factor it. It would look like this. All right. Now, this I'm going to leave like this for factored form because. I can't really treat this second one as a difference of squares. It doesn't work that way. What's going to be tricky about this one is when you go look for your x-intercepts. But let's go ahead and stick to the plan. Find out what degree it is. This is degree 1. This parentheses has degree 1, but there's an x squared in there, so it's really 2 there. So this is degree, total degree of 3, and it's a positive 1 out in front. So it's a positive odd, just like the last one. The arrows have to be like this. Find your y-intercept. I find it from the original equation, plugging in 0 here. If you plug in 0, that goes away, and it's just positive 8. Find your x-intercepts. This first one is at negative 2. That one's easy. That's not the problem. The problem is this guy right here. You're going to have to run it through the quadratic equation. So it's going to look like this. Work it a little bit more on the root. So 2 plus minus. This is going to be root negative 12 over 2. Root negative 12, you can rewrite as 2 i root 3. And so now you can reduce these 2's and just get 1 plus or minus i root 3. Okay, so basically this is an imaginary uh, x-intercept. The i means it's imaginary. What that means is you're not actually going to put it here. It doesn't, it doesn't go on your graph if it's imaginary. You just kind of realize that's where it's going to be, and then you don't graph it. So in terms of my x-intercepts, only the negative 2 is going to be placed on this graph. And at negative 2, it's a straight through because it's exponent 1. So I have all the information I need to graph this line. This one's going to go like this. I have to cut straight through. And I'll get rid of this arrow here. And I know it looks weird. 
It's not like the others with multiple X intercepts, but that's the way it is sometimes because we had an imaginary root. Now, if that just said one plus or minus root three with not the I, no imaginary, then yes, I would have put those X intercepts down. But since it had that imaginary, it does not get graphed. So practice factoring and stick to the plan in terms of similarity to the last video. Identify your arrows, identify your x-intercepts, identify your y-intercept, and then graph it. Hope this video helped.